Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Given that Brexit continues to be billed as taking back control, can the Secretary of State tell us which powers that are currently controlled by Brussels will the UK Government commit to giving to Holyrood and which will be re-reserved to Westminster? Yeah. Patrick Greeney. Mr Speaker, I'm not entirely certain that the Secretary of State answered to that no, question. Didn't. Will he categorically rule out that powers will not be re-reserved to this Parliament as a result of the decision to leave the European Union? Oh, yeah. Dr Philippa Whitford. Thank you, Mr Speaker. With a constituency that has an interest having an aerospace cluster, an airport and a large pharmaceutical production, can I ask what the Secretary of State's view is going to be on the single market, the open skies and the European Medicines Agency? Angus Robertson. Uh, may, may I remind the Secretary of State for Scotland that he was elected on a manifesto commitment to, and I quote, safeguard British interests in the single market. Market. So will he and his government work with the Scottish Government, respect the 62% of Scottish voters who voted to remain within the European Union and protect our place in Europe? Yesterday we learnt from statistics emanating from his own government the cost of Brexit will cost £66 billion a year. Now, if these statistics are being prepared for the Cabinet Office, surely they're also being prepared for the Scotland office, the state for Scotland be candid with the House and candid with the people of Scotland and tell us how much will Brexit cost Scotland. Yeah. To Amy Whiteford. Mr. So Speaker, the Secretary of State has on many occasions in the past extolled the trade benefits of the single market to Scotland. So regardless of whether the UK is a member state of the EU or not, does he still believe it's in Scotland's interest to have membership of the single market rather than trying to negotiate third party access? Hey. Much, Mr. Yeah, Speaker. Yeah. Um, I'm sure yesterday at the Joint Ministerial Working Group, the Scottish Ministers would have stressed their desire to see their employment programmes on a voluntary basis. What steps will the Secretary of State for Scotland take to ensure his government respects that desire? Yeah. Callum McCaig. Industry has been crystal clear that more work needs to be done to boost exploration. In the autumn statement, will this government bring forward exploration incentives to protect employment and boost production? Yes, Mr Grant. Since question time began this morning, Mr Speaker, five members on these benches have asked about membership in the European Union. Two have asked about Scottish jobs. Seven members on the Conservative benches want to talk about Scottish independence. Which of these, which of these would the Secretary of State describe as being obsessed with independence? Fellows. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, during recess, I attended the reopening yeah. of DL Works in yeah. Motherwell. Yeah. Will the Minister speak to the Scottish Government on how you can save jobs in steel by putting together a package that really works? Yeah. Yeah. Angus Robertson. Yeah. The European Commission Against Racism and Intolerance has found that a number of areas of concern over political discourse and hate speech in the UK, as well as violent racial and religious attacks. Police statistics have shown a sharp rise in Islamophobic, anti-Semitic and xenophobic assaults over the past year. So does the Prime Minister agree that all mainstream governments and all mainstream political parties should do everything that they can to oppose xenophobia and racism. Robertson. Remind the Prime Minister that when she was Home Secretary, she put advertising vans on the streets of this country telling foreigners to go home. And at her party conference, we heard that her party is wishing, wishing to register foreigners working in the UK. The crackdown and the rhetoric against foreigners by this government has even led to UKIP. UKIP yep. saying that things have gone too far. Can I tell the Prime Minister that across the length and breadth of this land, people are totally disgusted by the xenophobic uh, uh, language on display from her government? 
So will she now confirm to this House, will she confirm that the intention of her government is still to go ahead with the registration of foreign workers, but apparently we shouldn't worry because it will be kept secret by her government? Yeah. Point of order, Tasmina Ahmed Sheikh. Thank you very much indeed, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, on the 14th of September, the Secretary, Financial Secretary to the Treasury said at the dispatch box, in relation to the debacle that is the concentric's handling of tax credits, that people who provided the information would receive money in their bank accounts within four working days. Yeah. It has come to my attention, first of all, on the 29th of September, that that has now been changed to within two to three weeks before they will even be looked at, and then further to that, on the 4th of October, that the four-day uh, system is now not even in place, Mr Speaker. Oh. There are people who are suffering who cannot feed their children, who can't even send their children to school because they don't have money for lunch, and have to leave jobs because they can't afford childcare because of this absolute mess. Can I ask the Speaker if you can advise me? Because, Mr Speaker, my constituents cannot wait until the next question session for an answer. What tools I can use to ensure the Financial Secretary of the Treasury comes to the House and clarifies what the Government's position yeah, is? Yeah. Point of order, Mr Alan Brown. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, I am looking for advice on how to hold the Government to account and actually get answers for Ministers. On the 22nd of June, I sent a letter on behalf of a constituent to the then Home Secretary. Uh, uh, then Home Secretary. In a follow-up due to no response, I was advised that letter could not be found. It was then resubmitted to the new Home Secretary on the 16th of August, and I am still awaiting a response. Similarly, in June, I got notice of a uh, ministerial visit from the Scottish Secretary, and if I wanted information on that visit, to respond to the email. I responded immediately, asking what the purpose of the visit was, and I am still waiting to hear. Luckily, I was able to find out from other sources, but that, for me, is two examples, and it is unacceptable, so your advice would appreciate it.